I see you, fiending away, prowling around on group DIY looking for your next fix, and you keep coming to the same thing over and over again. It's this, the Silent Arts Dual LA-2A Optical Compressor. If you're looking at this build, you've already made up your mind. You're just itching for someone to give you that extra push. That's why I made this video. All these pretty shots and build tips are here to ease your mind. It's my way of saying, it's okay, bud. It's everything you ever dreamed of. You won't regret it. Your wife doesn't need to know how much any of this stuff costs. Anyways, my name is Shutik, and I'm addicted to building DIY gear. Or maybe solder fumes. I'm not really sure anymore. An LA-2A is a tube compressor that leverages an electroluminescent panel and light-dependent resistors to provide gain reduction in metering. The lightproof enclosure containing the panel and LDRs is called a T4B. The way this works is that as the electroluminescent panel gets brighter, the LDR's impedance increases, which in turn reduces the gain. As the input level decreases, the light dims and the resistor's impedance decreases. This configuration gives the unit unique compression and saturation characteristics. The LA-2A is a slower compressor and is known for being gentle, warm, and smooth while preserving the transients of the material it's being applied to. When it comes to DIY LA-2As, there are two popular starting points available to you. There's the PCB-based Silent Arts Dual LA-2A, or a point-to-point -point single LA-2A unit based on a chassis and wiring diagram from Analog Vibes. The Silent Arts build is for people who want a practical, best-in-class Dual LA-2A customized to their own personal tastes. The Analog Vibes option is for psychopaths who like point-to-point -point wiring and need a build that is as close to period correct as possible. I wanted two LA-2As, so I opted for the Silent Arts build. The support for the Silent Arts build is massive. The group DIY thread is over 100 pages long, and the members over there are extremely helpful. If you have a problem with this build, the odds are that someone had it before you, and they've documented the fix for it. Unlike the originals, the DLA-2A is both a stereo and dual mono compressor inside of a single unit. Stereo linking ensures that compression is being equally applied to both the left and right channels of your source material. Inside, nestled alongside the T4Bs, for each channel you'll find two 12AX7s. One amplifies the signal before hitting the 6AQ5, and the other is part of the sidechain gain reduction amplifier. The 6AQ5 provides the voltage necessary to drive the T4B and a 12BH7 output driver. Today we're going to talk about the controls and look at some common customizations and upgrades. I'll also cover the complete calibration procedure. Along the way, we'll listen to some examples of the unit in action, and at the end, I'll give my final thoughts about the build and who I think it's for. For our first demo, we'll try the unit on bass guitar. The LA-2A is a simple compressor to operate. The unit has a fixed attack, release, and ratio so you won't need to worry about any of these parameters while working with the unit. First up is peak reduction. Peak reduction acts as your threshold and allows you to determine when transients and peaks will be tamed. The further clockwise the control is set, the lower the threshold will be. Next is the gain control which allows you to control the makeup gain of the unit. You have a whopping 40 decibels of output gain at your disposal here. I can't fathom a time when I would need this much gain. 
The bypass in allows you to quickly AB the effect. When in bypass mode, the unit does not pass signal through the LA2A circuit. The limit slash comp toggle lets you choose between compression with a 3 to 1 ratio or limiting with an infinity to 1 ratio. The GR level toggle lets you switch the behavior of the VU meter. GR will show you how much gain reduction is taking place, and level will show you the output level. Enabling the stereo link feature will result in the same amount of gain reduction on each channel. This allows you to maintain your stereo image. If you have a different amount of gain reduction on each half of a stereo image, things will start to sound funky and unbalanced. Leave this control off if you want each channel to operate independently, or in what's otherwise known as dual mono. Peak reduction should be set to match on each channel while operating in stereo. Last up is the on-off switch. If you can't figure this one out, I'll go light one of those prayer candles at the local church for you. Let's get a little fancier. For this example, I'm going to run vocals through my Hairball 1176 Rev A and then run them through the LA-2A. By chaining these together, the 1176 will handle peak limiting and the LA-2A will work to smooth things out. Chinese Eric, well he won't pick up the telephone He said he'd call me back And I've been sitting for a minute in his kitchen Hands strapped to my gap Silent Arts has made this build a lot more accessible by designing a high-quality PCB. This board will serve as the base for you to create a dual LA-2A that is as simple or as complex as you want. If you're not interested in the build notes right now, skip to the timecode on the screen for my final thoughts on the unit. There's a bill of materials, or BOM, that covers a majority of the parts created by users Azone and Qnote of the group DIY form. They've even included the parts needed for some of the more popular customizations. While the parts in the bomb are still valid, you'll find that some of the prices and part numbers are out of date. You'll need to find suitable replacements for items that are no longer in stock. You should also adjust your expectations for the price to build the dual LA-2A. It's going to be higher than what's on the bomb. There's a link to that bomb in the description of the video. There are a few different options for the case, and I opted for this one from DIY Rack. I really like the layout and the screen print on it is really nice. You'll need to drill your own holes to mount the PCB, input transformers, output transformers, and a few other items. Use screws with the lowest profile possible so you don't scratch up any rack gear that might sit below the DLA-2A. The wiring for the heaters lives beneath the circuit board. Here's what that looks like on my build. If I did this again, I would opt to use 22 gauge solid core wire. I think this would allow for a cleaner looking installation. For the T4B Opto attenuators, new old stock isn't an option unless you're some kind of bazillionaire. The supply of these dried up a long time ago, and of the little supply left, stereo matching isn't an option. This leaves two realistic options for the build with new production offerings from both Kenatech and Black Lion. After researching user experiences across group DIY and the web, I landed on the Kenatex. The internet seems pretty unanimous that these are as true to the originals as you can get. I've even seen people on the forums buying Kenatex to replace the T4Bs included with the Universal Audio LA-2A reissue. Kenatech also has a stereo matching option which puts them streets ahead of the competition. This build utilizes Molex connectors for cable connections. Getting the right tool for this job is worth every penny. I tried doing this without a Molex crimp, and it was miserable, and my crimps were nowhere near as good as they needed to be. A $30 crimp tool will be worth every penny. I got these VUs from Hairball. They're the same ones used in their 1176 builds. 
The first time I fired up the DLA-2A, I noticed that my VU meters weren't working. I forgot to include a bit of wiring that can be easy to miss. First, using a Molex connector, you need to run a wire from the zero volt relay on channel one all the way to the negative terminal of the channel one VU. Route this in between these caps here to make the wiring nice and clean. You then connect the negative terminal of this VU to channel two's VU. You'll also need to connect the five volt relay located on the top corner of the board to the bypass terminal of the in slash bypass toggle on channel one. Run a wire from the toggle to a 100 ohm resistor. On the same side of the resistor, connect another red wire to another 100 ohm resistor. Attach the unconnected sides of each 100 ohm resistor to their respective positive terminal on the VU meter. For my build, I chose to use 5 watt 62 volt Zener diodes instead of neon lamps. Functionally, these work the same in this circuit. The Zener diode has the advantages of producing less noise and having longer durability. For the peak reduction and gain controls, I chose to upgrade to stepped pots, which allow you to more precisely dial in your settings. For this, I used Elma 24 position switches. These can be pretty pricey. I recommend ordering these directly from Elma. Step pots are useful if you want to easily repeat past settings. They're critical if you want to use the unit for mastering by allowing you to dial in the exact same settings on each channel. Plus, they look like beautiful techno flowers. How could you pass that up? One other thing. The gain pots are 25K each in my build. These are wired in series with a 75K resistor. This provides a more usable gain control on the unit. Without this setup, you'll be operating the unit within a very small section of the gain pot sweep. The toroidal power transformer was purchased along with the PCB from Silent Arts. Toroidal transformers are both quieter and more efficient than traditional PTs. A lot of people online think that they sound better too. Fun fact, toroidal power transformers may make physical noise in the presence of DC offset. If you encounter a persistent buzzing noise here, you may need to introduce a DC blocker to remove the DC component of the input power. For the tubes, I recommend going new production where possible. You want to make sure you order low noise, low microphonics tubes for the 12AX7s and 12BH7s. I have a sneaking suspicion that when you don't select these options, you get shipped bottom of the barrel tubes, but I've got no way of confirming that. For the 6AQ5, you'll need to get new old stock. When ordering new old stock, make sure you order from a reputable dealer. For the input and output transformers, you can use either EdCore or Souders. The EdCores are substantially cheaper than the Souders. They're so much cheaper that it might be worth setting up the unit with EdCores first and deciding later if you need to upgrade. I have the Souders in my unit and they sound great. I have no idea how the EdCores sound, but form users seem satisfied, especially for the price. Some folks will opt for Arco capacitors in the C4 position of the PCB in order to tweak the value here. I actually ordered some of these when I started this build. The PCB isn't designed to accommodate these directly, and I was on the fence about overcoming the hassle required to install them when I found a post by group DIY user Kingston. Kingston says, C4 acts very much like a high shelf filter above something like 10 kilohertz. It's in the feedback loop of the makeup gain amp and is used to set a flat response with your choice of output transformer. But this cap is such a central part of the amp, it has a great effect on sound. And those Arcos are shite. They do horrible things to the top end. I ended up getting a selection of silver mica caps in the range of the Arco, something like 150 to 500 PF, if I remember correctly, then tested for the one that gave the flattest frequency response. Instead of the Arcos, I went with the default values for these caps. The best option here would be to use sockets for C104 and C204 so you can try different options. Finally, I've substituted R125 and R225 with a 100K trim pot. This will make adjusting the unit's meters way easier during calibration. Now we're gonna try the LA-2A on an electric guitar. It isn't quite as common to use them for this purpose, but I think sometimes it can be just the right thing for smoothing things out.
Now that you've built the unit, it's time to calibrate. There are four areas which require calibration on the DLA-2A. All adjustments will need to be completed on both the left and the right channel. For the purpose of this video, we'll perform calibration on the left channel unless stated otherwise. You'll end up doing the exact same thing for the right channel. First, use the zero adjust trim pot to find the spot where the unit will read zero decibels while in gain reduction mode. Now we need to adjust R125 and R225 to find a spot where both the gain reduction and level settings are providing consistent measurements between one another. To do this, you'll need to send a zero volt or 1.228 volt signal to the compressor. Starting in level mode, Turn the peak reduction until you see minus 5 decibels on the meter. Now flip over to the gain reduction setting. You'll see something different than minus 5 decibels. Adjust the variable resistor at R125 to get the level and gain reduction to sync up under these conditions. You'll need to bounce between these two positions while tweaking the trim pot in order to get level and gain reduction to sync up. The value required for this variable resistor will be different on each channel. Limiter response calibration at RV137 and RV237 is really a matter of taste. This controls the amount of high frequency compression. With the trim pot all the way clockwise, you get a flat side chain response. Turning it counterclockwise will result in compression which is increasingly more sensitive to higher frequencies. Play around with this using some source material until you find a spot you like. Finally, we have the stereo balance adjust. This makes sure that the unit is compressing left and right channels equally. First, enable stereo link. For each channel, make sure peak reduction is set to zero. And the stereo adjust trim pots are all the way clockwise. Set both meters to gain reduction. Adjust the left channel peak reduction control until you see minus 5 decibels of gain reduction. Adjust the stereo trim pot on the channel that shows the greater amount of gain reduction until the gain reduction indications are equal. I really enjoyed building the Silent Arts Dual LA-2A. This compressor was the perfect balance of challenge and reward for me. I love that there are so many customizations available for the build. It lets you set the difficulty at a place that's as comfortable or challenging as you want. Just keep in mind that with every area you choose to upgrade, you'll be adding increased complexity and cost to the project. Even if you pursue the most basic version of this build, it's going to be expensive. If you opt for the upgrades I've covered in this video, the total cost for the project will be somewhere around 2,000 US dollars. So that brings us to the big question. Do you really need a stereo LA-2A? Stereo applications to consider for an LA-2A might include piano, strings, synths, and even a drum bus. Personally, I very rarely use the stereo feature, but when I do, it's on a mix bus. What I find more useful is having two mono LA-2As on hand. This has been really useful during my mixing process. If you don't need stereo or two mono LA-2As, you might want to consider a build that allows you to build a single channel LA-2A. This would allow you to build the LA-2A of your dreams at a more affordable price point. At the end of the day, it's all about what works best for you. The Silent Arts Dual LA-2A is a lot of fun to build and it sounds fantastic. I highly recommend this build for those who will be able to regularly put it to use. Thanks for hanging out to the end. I'm not sponsored and everything I build, I pay for out of pocket. If you'd be willing to comment and subscribe to this video, I'd be so happy. My guy Eric loves a blender of a bender. He taps into his stash. It's not funny when my money winds up missing I'll beat it out as that